Sound speed. Marker. Action. Check, check. Check, one, two. Son of a Sound speed. Action. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for another True Audio Presents. My name is Thomas Pop. I'm the head of marketing over here at True Audio. Just to let you know a little bit more about us, we've got five different locations. So if you like what we're showing you today and you're interested, check out one of these places. We have local sales reps standing by for you. But before we even get into the rack and bag system, which we're going to talk about in a second, I need to send out a congratulations to all of the Oscar nominees. These guys, nominees for Greyhound, Warren Shaw, Michael Minkler, Bo Borders, and David Wyman. Mank, Ren Kleiss, Jeremy Malad, David Parker, Nathan Nance, Drew Coonan, and the News of the World, Oliver Tarney, Mike Prestwood-Smith, William Miller, and John Princhett. Soul, Ren Kleiss, Koya Elliott, and David Parker. And finally, Sound of Metal, Nicholas Becker, Jaime Bashi, Michelle Kutulink, I'm sorry I butchered that name, Carlos Cortez, and Philip Blade. These are some incredible sound mixers that have just told some incredible stories during a very difficult time. So make sure that you guys go out and check all of those nominees and let us know what you would pick. What's your best movie this year for sound? We want to know. Let us know in the comments below. But enough about that. We're here today to talk about the rack and bag system. So, without further ado, I'd like to start with a little commercial before we bring in our guests. Check it out. This is the rack and bag system from Film Devices. Check it out. Film Devices' patent-pending rack and bag has evolved location sound kits to a whole new level. No more equipment floating loosely in a bag. Every device is in an accessible, secure location which you configure to your needs. All connections are easy to reach and cable rat nests are eliminated. Our system converts from a shoulder or harness bag to a desk console. The bag has access to all sides of the mixer. Features include an optional built-in power distribution system using Audio Root brand equipment and our front-loaded slide-in smart battery sled. In addition, the rack and bag is expandable to include a second row of wireless devices. The outer nylon bag height is adjustable as well. The rack and bag is available in three sizes which can accommodate most mixer recorders on the market. Carbon fiber and aluminum construction assures high strength and light weight. All models come with a detachable pouch that has pockets for your transmitters and room for a headset and accessories. The available docking kit allows the rack and bag to be mounted to your sound cart with just a few turns of a knob. Options include a swing out phone holder and a wing kit for the small and medium models. We make an economical harness that fits all our rack and bags. It includes a boom pole sling for one handed operation. Our exclusive smart battery sled can be purchased separately for your existing system. It is available with 4-pin Hyros or TA4F connector. This will work with most existing distro systems. We sell complete distro systems that come in two sizes utilizing the audio root distros. The package comes with a smart battery sled and five cables of your choice. We also sell a large selection of power cables that come in 30, 40, and 50 centimeters. These short lengths are designed to keep rat's nests out of your sound bag. Our dual USB port connects to the distro. Great for charging phones or for an LED gooseneck light. Our travel boom pole kit is available in carbon fiber or aluminum. It is just 20 inches closed and extends to 68 inches. It comes with our boom pole holder and a Matthews Studio mini grip head. The total weight of the carbon fiber kit is 1.6 pounds and it fits in your carry-on. 
The simple sleeve for boom poles is made of 1680 denier ballistic nylon. They come in four sizes to fit most boom poles. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you online at filmdevices.com. Wow, an amazing commercial, and if you guys haven't seen one, this is one in the flesh. Please ignore the incredible rock lamp there. I love rock lamps. Uh, but this is the film devices. This is the small. Is that right, Ken? It's You know what? It's time to bring in our guest. Gosh, I'm, I'm already talking about the products. I have with me today Ken Martini, who is the creator devices, of the rack, rack and, bag and Bag Systems. He is the CEO of Film Devices. And I also level. have just no an incredible sound mixer from the Los Angeles area, Every Ray Gaona. How are you guys doing today? location, which you configure to your Good. needs. Real well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Rat uh, Ray, I know that you have been a long-time user. You kind of adopted this rack and bag system earlier, and it's funny because has it's just now that I'm starting to hear Features about the rack and bag system built -in you know, in the waves on social media. What is this bag? What is this bag? You've been using this bag for a long time. What brought you to this bag? Ken, we're going to get to you in a minute, but I want to just I want to get people excited with an actual user for a minute. Talk to me for a second. Uh, yeah, uh, I've been using it for a while now, and uh, it was the same for me. I saw it floating around a little bit on social media, and I was curious about it. And uh, so I looked up the company. I looked up Canon Film Devices, and I saw that they were located in the Sonoma area, and I was up in the in the North Bay area filming. So I figured, you know what? Let me reach out to Ken and let me see this product in person. And um, yeah, I gave him a call. He said, "Come by the shop." I brought by uh, my sound devices A33 with the SL2 module. Um, stopped by, Ken met Ken, and he uh, he was very nice. He stopped everything he was doing at the moment. He was working on some racking bags, and he's all like, "Let me check this out." Started looking at my uh, equipment, and and yeah, he started doing some measurements, and and he started customizing a racking bag right there, right on the spot for me. It was it was great. It, you seeing seeing the product in person was like. That's what did it for me. Excellent. And guys, I want to apologize. I know that there was a small glitch. This this little video in the four shot was still playing audio. I killed it. It's there. I appreciate everything. Thank you, guys. Want to get back into it. Ray, thank you for your experience. I want to kick this to Ken now to talk for a little bit. Ken, take this away and tell me about this. They've obviously seen it now. They've gotten a little bit of a taste of what Ray's talking about. Now I want them to experience you. Uh. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, such a great honor to be here and uh, our little fledgling company. Um, we're hoping that uh, more people will find us, uh, thanks to you. Um, so in front of me is the small unit. Um, this is a complete unit. I don't have the face cover on, but uh, you understand what that is. Um, and I'm going to disassemble this. What makes the rack and bag really different is for the most part, you no longer need the bag. The bag is just great for transporting it, getting it to location. And uh, the bag is great if you have bad weather. If it's raining, you put your shield on and you use it as you do a normal bag. But for the most part, if you're indoors or you have good weather, Get rid of the bag. You don't need the bag anymore. So this is the pouch. In it, I keep a little box full of my lavs and adapters and uh, antennas. Um, I keep my transmitters. And I'm going to remove the pouch now. Pouch comes off, it's velcroed on. This is a very modular system, everyone. So everything that he's going to show you, he's basically reverse engineering the bag right now as he's taking everything apart right there. This is the, what is this called? The front pouch or the front bag? Is that right, Ken? Yeah, that's just a pouch. Okay, very good. Um, okay. Uh, the pouch... <clears throat> Velcro's onto the top. Mm -hmm. It's got Velcro patches on the side. The top also has a place for your boom mic. It has two uh, straps for that. 
<clears throat> and so if you want to, first I'm going to show you how to leave the bag, use it in the bag. So I just pull this back. I fold this back and Velcro it. And now I'm going to open up the top. And I'm going to open up the bottom. And I'm going to pull the kickstand down. So this is it being used with the kickstand, everything in place. This is typically how I use it if I don't want to take it out of the bag. I'll remove the handle. I love the way clicking. that the handle removes. I was like, how does this thing go? Oh, my God. It's so easy to just click it in and out. So, uh, you know, yeah, when you want to get it out of the way, it's a great feature to just pop it off like that. So now I can use the and now I can use the system inside the bag, um, and so uh, that's a way that I'll use it. But for the most part, I don't use it uh, with the bag. I actually remove the bag. So I'm going to remove the bag now. While he's doing that, I'm going to show you guys an overhead of mine. This is what the bag looks like when it's completely off. Because, you know, on my, like, I'm kind of like Ken, like it's, it's living on my, on my desk here. You know, I used to just stick that mix pre on the table and, you know, it'd push around everything. I, I, I really like it. Ken, can I keep this? <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I just kind of like how it's all set up and everything works. It's like my little command station over here. Um, but yeah, you can see that like, you know, if I was using this out in the field, yeah, I would absolutely want to have this bag to be able to protect everything from the elements. Um, but you know, when it's out, when it's in my air conditioned studio over here, I don't really need that, you know? Uh, so now, uh, now I have it on and this is how I typically use it. This is a small rig. I typically take this out when I'm doing interviews, uh, small setups. Uh, it's got the mix pre-10 in it. And, uh, and then uh, what's really nice about this is I can plug my keypad in to uh, write notes. If it's dark inside the room, uh, if I have the USB option, that's... That's this is a USB option to plug straight into the distro with the high roast connector. Mm -hmm. You know what? We should actually talk a little bit about the distro kit first because I don't think you've introduced it yet. Yes, you have the USB adapters that allow you to plug in things for your phone and lights, but I think one of the greatest aspects of this rack and bag system is your what's the what's the correct word like your connection with uh the audio root battery distribution kits your system is just connected to where well like take a look at mine it's like built right into the system so it's it's not going to move it's not going to fall out it's just it's perfect. It's like, that's where I want it. So I want it just to be perfectly built in and to be like part of the frame. Um, so tell me a little bit more about these distro kits. Yeah. Um, thank you for mentioning that and bringing us to that place. Um, it was kind of, uh, I don't have any big agenda, which things are presented first. So take your lead. Mm -hmm. The distro systems there, we have two of them. This is a small one, and these come permanently attached. The larger one, you can disconnect the battery sled. Um, we work with Audio Root in France, and they customize the cable length for us. And once we get the battery cups here, we put them in a CNC machine and machine them to fit our sled. And so, uh, and so then once we have that, you can see the operation here. We take a battery and um, just slide it in. And that connects immediately. And you can turn on the power and you now have a distribution system. When we sell the distribution kits with, uh, as a kit, we sell it with five cables. So you get a choice of five cables. We give you one high rows to high rows or high rows to TA4, depending on which system you have, that'll be running your, uh, to run your uh, mixer. 
And then the rest are TC connectors, so to run all your radios. And, you know, uh, we have a question but, right now. Jeffrey M. Jones, he yeah. asks, how do devices stay locked in and on the unit? I use two remote audio HD batteries in tandem with my distro. Uh, the, the devices are, the, the actual mixer is compressed between two plates. And so it looks like this. So let's see if you, if you can see there's these little rubber bumpers. We put them on both sides and then it's held between two plates. And that's what holds the, your mixer in place. The battery split, it has four holes and they are screwed directly to the plate as well as the distro. So those are screwed directly down the USB is uh, held down with adhesive. And so, so everything is locked in its place. So that's why you don't need the bag. Everything is nothing going anywhere. It's yeah. just locked in. And in fact, you and, know, uh, Jeff was asking about even like batteries, you know, with I, I have everything externally powered because this is my control surface. But I wanted to show people that, you know, you're just putting the battery in and just pushing it in and then bam. Everything's powered up, good to go, just like that. Yeah, and then when you when we have bigger systems, if you are using a Scorpio or some other larger system, we also offer a dual battery sled with two batteries, and we have uh, a uh, uh, Schottky diodes in here, which isolate the two, and so this allows you to use uh, two batteries. Excellent. Uh, uh, and so let's see what else I have to say on this one. So the, this is, one has the wing kit, these little wings. And the little wings, uh, say you have an extra, let's see, let's grab another part. Mm. So say you have a hop, you want to hop over, you can add other devices to your wing here. Let me get this going here. So, so you can put four devices on there. So you, if, if these are two channel receivers, you got four channels, you can put up to eight channels of sound. The other thing is we can change the height. We can uh, customize the height of the top tier. So if you want, you can put in two layers of a wireless devices or any other kind of devices. Do you have a photo of that there? One showing the two, the double tier. Uh, yeah. Well, I have I have this shot right here of it empty, and then I basically have it set up where I have the small, medium, and then I have a large setup as well. So uh, basically, letting people know the three different sizes. Yeah. Anyway, somewhere we have a photo that shows it with two tiers. Uh, yeah, I think what Ken is talking about is like the top tier is extended. You can see like where there's like a double stack of receivers. Gotcha. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep looking through it. You guys sent me a ton of pictures, so I'll do my best to find it. It's, a, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then <clears throat> plugging the light in. Uh, you can see I've turned it on. Mm -hmm. And so this illuminates my keypad or uh, my devices. <clears throat> and now if I want, um, there's another option. This is a phone holder. It, <clears throat> it connects over here to the side. It's got the bracket that's right here. We just tighten it, pretty simple. I don't know how, how well you can see that. And then I've got my phone. It's already got the app running. This is mine and too now, on my end. See, I can just slide it in and then I just won't do one little quick little tighten and there it is, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, anyway, go back to my overhead. Mm -hmm. So there it is with the, and now I'm looking at all my, my VU meters. 
Yeah, that works great when you're working with all of these new, you know, wave agent and, you know, remote apps and things like that to just have it open, have it powered off of your bag the whole day. Uh, we have a question. It says, uh, people are, okay, saying agree with Jeff Wexler, all Zach's on here. Nova and Nomad Arx 12, D24 Arx 12R on a cart. Yeah, if you guys are planning on, and I think this is a great time to bring in Ray for a moment. How you doing, buddy? I know you've been quiet for a little bit, not for long. Uh, we want to talk to you a, a little bit about, you know, the expansiveness and what I'm going to say is the modularity of this system is, you know, a lot of people look at this and they say, well, it's kind of like fixed. I'm, I'm nervous because I'm going to put this in somewhere and I'm going to be stuck. And when I need to change or take something out, what do I do? So you actually sent me an incredible video. I'm going to show it. Can you talk to me about this? This is your sound card. Is that right? Yeah, well, before the video, I think actually what some of these people are are asking about, yeah, that's a good picture for it. Um, since I, I kind of thought the same thing because of the layers, mm -hmm. I, I didn't need a, I don't need a BDS system because the SL2 module on the on the A series is kind of like the BDS. It provides power to external receivers mm -hmm. and it's also slotting for the receivers. So I didn't need the extra layers. So that's why I, I needed to talk to Ken in person about that too. Um, and he was able to customize it to where it was just two layers, which I think Jeff was asking um, about the Nova and some other people were talking about the Nova where, where you don't need so many layers. Um, so yeah, so my 833 and the SO2 module setup, it just has two layers. And if I, I think you have some pictures, right? That I might've sent you of those. Yep. Yeah. So you can see there, there's no layer in between the receivers and the, and the recorder itself. Gotcha. So he was able to custom that for me and he changed the height and there's no BDS system in this setup here. Okay. But here in, so, but here's a different example as well. So just depending on the job yeah. that you're doing, you know, you're building something that, Oh, actually it does look a, a little bit similar. Yeah. You just dropped everything down into that middle row where on mine over here, I've got, you know, the battery distribution system and everything in the middle. Yeah. So you can do it any yeah. way you want. Is that right guys? If you want to put the batteries on the top row, you can, if you want to put them on the middle row, you can, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Right. The batteries typically stay in the middle row, but we can move that whole tier up and down if we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very versatile system. Uh, and if you need to reconfigure the system, um, we have a little kit that lets you... So you can... These are the internal threaded rods. They go down the middle of each one. You can see. Oh, wow. So and it's very strong. So very, very strong. This is carbon fiber. You couldn't break this. He's, and so he's talking about these poles right here, everyone, that it's basically, uh, you know, on the four corners. So it's basically the, the frame of the entire system. Yeah. So you can get this reconfiguration kit uh, and... Do it yourself. Just cut them to the length you want and just change your equipment. And uh, and if you don't want to do it, just let us know. We'll send you the correct length. You tell us what length you want, and we'll send you a whole new kit if you need it to or send you something to reconfigure it here. So it's um, easy to do. It's not, it's not that difficult to change the uh, configuration. Mm -hmm. So as your gear evolves, you know, if something gets to be a couple of millimeters this way or that way, we can accommodate that pretty quickly. Very um, cool. One of the things yeah. that I like about the system is that you do make it very easy. And by the way, we have a question about how to attach a bow tie antenna. So we're going to get to that in a second. Um, but, uh, you know, like you have actually a sheet. Stand by here. I've got to pull it up on my end. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on for this session today, everyone. Uh, so this right here is a screenshot of the rack and bag configuration form. And there's one for the small, the medium, and the large. This is physically their website. So if you guys are a little bit confused, you can, you know, by all means, contact one of us at True Audio. We're more than happy to help you figure it out. Um, but if you need to, you can go ahead and just print this out and select everything that you want. Tell them what you have and, you know, if you want it standard, extended, or custom. And it just kind of basically shows you how all the tiers work and everything. Glenn True from Nashville. Hello, hello. 
So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically how it works. So if you guys need help with the configuration, they made it easy uh, to you know be expansive and to understand the full realm of what you can purchase. Because it's not just like about just going and getting a bag and being done with it. It's like, no, this, this is modular and it's scalable. You can do so much, uh, right? Yeah, um, yeah. If you need to add, we we're starting to work on the bow tie antennas. Uh, that's an, uh, the next item that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you go to my overhead shot, mm -hmm. bringing it up. Yep. Yeah. These top rails right here, right? These top rails. We're going to make some kind of a clip that you can just clip the bow ties right onto it. Mm -hmm. So we're working on it. It may not be there, maybe elsewhere, but somewhere there will be a place to put the bow ties. Excellent. And um, that, that's coming right up. And just so everyone can see as well, I'm going to bring this in here because some people are saying, Ken, that your feed is just a little bit pixelated. I don't know if we're having a little bit of an internet uh, issue, but um, this is what he's talking about right here, all these bars. The great thing is there's so many attachment points that they're just going to start making accessories for anything. Sky's the limit. And trust me when I say Ken is the type of person that if you need something, you can probably give him a call or find him online. He's going to, you know, stay up all night and help you. Am I right, Ray? Yeah, pretty much. He yeah, he, uh, he he took a look at my equipment and he knew right away what to do with it. So I'm sure he can do that with other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Ken, I want to interrupt again. I really want to talk a lot more about the docking bracket because, in my opinion, yes, the the rack and bag system is phenomenal. But the docking bracket is like the icing on the cake. It's like the cherry or the maraschino cherry in your shake. You know what I mean? It's so good because of what it does. Can I show the video now? You stopped me, Ray, earlier. I got to show it. Yeah, go ahead. Because that's actually what sold me on it, too. It's actually it fulfilled my needs. All right, check it out. So this is Ray's cart with the rack and bags. Is this the small or the medium? This is a small. Okay, this is the small. And do you see how the... the uh, the docking bracket is built into the car. Boom. You know what? I'm going to play it again so everybody can mm -hmm. see it because that does that demands a replay. You're just literally dropping it in and then just screwing that bracket to push it in to tighten it down. So it's it's literally what a five second hot swap. Yeah, that, that was a big deal for me because that's what I that's what I was looking for. I needed something that I can go from a bag to to, you know, mobile. Um, I mean, from the cart. And to be mobile, you know, sometimes you have car setups or, you know, sometimes you have these long walk and talks or something crazy that you got to come off the cart. And um, and that's why I, I was looking into the racking bag because I needed something like that. And yeah. once I saw the docking brackets, I was just like, OK, this is perfect. And, and, and the docking brackets really lock it in too. that thing. Is, it does, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, so we've got a couple comments over here. Somebody saying, wow, this is better than Porta Brace. No, it's different. And port brace Everybody's got their place. And the thing that I love about this is that it takes a bag, something that we're used to having all zipped up and everything, and it just changes the functionality and the flow of how we use it. So it's it's just a different egg. It's a goose egg. It's it's we don't always get goose eggs in our industry, so it's very cool. Uh, another question that we have is my only concern is with how comfortable it is to wear. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about, Ken, I'm going to flip over to a picture. You actually go even beyond this. You have harnesses and things like that then ca that can connect to the bag. People are seeing some of the pictures now. Um, one of the things to let you know is that it is so lightweight. Yes, I understand that some of the other bag manufacturers are extremely lightweight, but this is really really lightweight like you're gonna feel the weight of the gear and that's it like the the bag doesn't really uh add any weight to it are there any shelves made yet for the aton cantar Ooh, that's a good question is there an aton cantar uh rack and bag yet we it's in the works okay uh, we we are working on the mini and uh, hopefully in about uh, four to six months, we should have something out for the Mini. It will be the first on the market. Uh, nobody's been able to come up with the design for that. Uh, it's just such a different kind of piece of gear, the way it's laid out. 
uh, that uh, it's something that you couldn't tackle until you came up with a frame system like this. Absolutely. It just doesn't fit in a bag. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got people pointing out the wing kit again. That That is one of the best parts of this. So I'm going to show you guys my little camera here for a moment. If you can see, this is the wing kit. So one of the cool things about this, I'm just going to take some of the stuff, take my tentacle sinks off of there. This, you know, just kind of folds down like that and goes like this. So if you, if you don't need it, there it is. But if you do, while you're working, you can fold this up and it's almost like a little command station where you can take everything if you know, you've got different transmitters or you know, things that you need to Velcro up on here, you can. Or if you just wanna start at the beginning of the day with all of your transmitters laid out, you know, one, two, three, four, so you're ready to put them on all of your talent and then you're ready to go, then you can flop it down. It's just a, a really good way to organize yourself. And the great thing is everybody does it differently, so there's a lot of different options, right? The reason I, I like this for myself when I'm out doing sound mixing, I put my transmitters on the top, and then I check my frequencies, I get everything synced, it's right in front of me. And so I, I've got my... Uh, I've got my receivers, I got my transmitters, uh, everything's right there. Um, and, and then it's basically I'm staging my transmitters. As the talent arrives on the set, I just pick off the, uh, I pick off a transmitter. Uh, and sometimes I even have the lob already attached to it. I just have it dangling and then just hook it up to the talent and I'm ready to go. That is excellent. And you know what, I've got a lot of people saying, bag mode, cart mode. <laughs> I actually like that because, you know, it is true. Like it's really easy to switch different modes when you're working. Uh, this is a great system. You know, another thing that I want to bring up, and it's not to rub any noses to any other manufacturers. This is just the fact of the game right now. We are in amidst a global pandemic still, right? And we all need to be patient with our manufacturers because there are a lot of not just the manufacturers that are running out of things like bags. All of the people that they buy the parts from to make the bags have run out of their parts too. So everybody's hurting from this. And what's happened is that there's pretty much been like, I'll call it hashtag bag drought. Uh, there has not been a lot of sound bags recently. That doesn't mean they're not coming. Shh, that's your only secret. But what I'm saying is that this is another option. If you need something now or you need something different that's going to work, this is a great tabletop setup. It's great for when you just need to be able to plop things down or take things in and out of your cart so easily. Someone's asking, can I mount this? on, uh, can I mount on outside of bag? Can I mount on, on the outside of the bag? I believe that that is, that's a yes. Is that right, guys? I mean, it, it has all of the frame that, you know, you can connect to any different part of the frame, even like the, uh, the phone holder here just kind of mounts onto the actual chassis of the system. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Very good. Guys, uh, lots of questions. I mean, honestly, this, these are the best kind of live streams to me. The ones where we don't have to talk. We just basically get and relay to everyone. Um, let's see here. Would love to see some braces for dipole antennas. Philippe, you're in luck. That's technically coming very, very soon. They're working on some new accessories all the time that will be able to help you with that. Will Hirsch asks, I've got a Cedar DNS2. How would that fit into this potentially? Is that something that you can modify to work with the system, Ken? I'm not familiar with that piece of sound gear, uh, so I can't speak about that. Okay, copy. You know what? I tell you what, for anybody that has a specific question of hashtag will it fit, what I want you to do, I want you to jot down this page. We've got five different retail locations and everybody here has been versed on this system. So if you need help and you like the system and you would like to purchase one, give us a call or just contact us on our social media. We have this beautiful thing here. Take a look to the side. It's called uh, hashtag ask true. So all you have to do is say, hey, 
Will my rack and bag system work with this recorder or with this product? And you know what? We'll, we'll contact Ken and we'll find out and we'll get back to you. We're here to help you. In fact, you, you were kind of bringing that up before that with some of the distribution that you have, Ken, um, it might be a little bit harder for some people. They might be a little bit intimidated because of the, the versatility of this when purchasing. So True Audio is a really good place for that because we understand your needs as a sound mixer and we also understand the manufacturer and how this was built. So w we will help you get the system that's right for you. How about that, right? Um, I have infinite patience for people's questions. So uh, I'm, I'm willing to address any kind of question you ha may have. Uh, but while I've got you here, uh, let's, can we go on to the different sizes and just quickly go through the, uh, show you the other two sizes? Let's do it. We've been talking about the small a lot. Which is the next one do you want to go into? Well, let's go to the medium. You got it. So this is the medium bag right here. And you know what? Let me throw in one question while you're going. Someone's asking, will this fit the sound devices 552? Do you know which one? Um, yes. Is that the medium that fits yes. the, the 552? Large. Okay, the large one the large does. One. Okay, t uh, John Taper, the large, rack and bag large fits the 552. Okay, so. And I'll flip back to your uh, page for a minute. There you go. So this is the medium. Not much different than the small. You also have the wing kit. Uh, and in this instance, we have some tr we have some receivers uh, just kind of Velcro down to the top deck there. Not much to see. It's very similar. This has got a 633 in it. Um, and so very similar to the small. And I'll just quickly go on to the large one. Now, the large one doesn't have the wing kit. You don't really need it because you've got such a long panel here. And over here, I've got four of the 411 receivers. I've got the larger distro. This would be a good candidate for using the dual battery sled because mm -hmm. this would be a little bit more power-hungry setup. I'll take off the handle and get a better view of it. So this uh, is a, this is the 664, which is about the same size as the uh, 555. So this would be the unit to hold that. There's the hand. There's the uh, wire leg on it. Jeffrey Jones is asking, will your battery sleds fit the remote audio HD batteries? I I'm assuming you're talking about the HiQ remote audio batteries. I believe they're the exact same form size, so they should work no problem. Yeah, that, that's what yeah. I use. These, them. That's these what you are the HiQ right here. There you go. And so you can see, there it is right there. The, the smart battery systems are all the same, whether you're whether you bought the... Uh, Audio Root, or uh, there's several brands. They're actually all being made by the same company. People are just rebranding them. Uh, and uh, so anyway, so this is your large. I wanted to point out that the legs are designed so that they don't, you can't go forward with them. You can only go backwards. Yeah, I noticed so that. Like, like I was very worried about it kind of flopping around on my on my desk. And so I actually, I put some weight on it and it didn't even move. So you're going to put that kickstand up and throw it down and it's, well, don't throw it, put it down, put it down gently, but it's going to be great, you know, yeah, be gentle. Well, yeah. um, the thing about this system is that um, if you want, uh, you don't have to want, but you can see we're almost set up for a double row on this one. See that? Very cool. See, I got my transmitters and my receivers. 
Yeah, you see, can see that. The, see. what I'm see. seeing from this, because remember, I, I'm pretty much, yes, I've had this for a week or so, but, you know, I'm seeing this for the first time with everybody live, and let me know what you guys think about this, too. But I feel that this is the type of bag and the type of system that's meant for somebody that's just, man, like, if you walk into your house and you have OCD and you've got to have every plate clean and everything's got its place, you're probably a rack and bag user, you know what I mean? Because you are one of those people that like to cross your T's and dot your I's. You like everything in the right place. You know where everything is. My transmitters go here and my receivers go here and here's my batteries and all my cables are perfectly made at the exact length that they need to be. You really need to check out this system because you're just that type of person. You know what I mean? I think it's going to make you really happy, right? What do you say about that, Ray? Yeah, that is exactly right. Yeah. Um, cause I'm that person. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. I was thinking that, right. It's just like, if, if you're a type of person that's got to have all your ducks in a row, this yeah. is the type of system it, it, that you want to look clean at. Setup. You can keep it very clean. Um, like one of those pictures that you showed of, of my, of my setup, it, we were filming, doing a, a pickup at, a, um, at a, like this, uh, this producer's house in the Hollywood Hills. And, um, it was just audio, audio bites. Um, and I just had to show up, you know, with something small and clean. Um, it was the other picture where they're like, it's yeah, that picture right there. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so it, it lives in your cart, but they're like, hey, this is crazy. We don't want you pulling that cart in the house. Boom. No problem. I'll just take this out and yeah, come on in. Exactly. So this was one of the rooms in his house and I didn't want to show up with too much stuff or anything. So that that helped me kind of keep it clean. And he actually even complimented it. He was just like, that's a nice little clean setup. And you're like. I know. <laughs> That's awesome. We've got a question from Lou. He says, what audio root distro takes two battery inputs? Ken, I'm going to leave that to you, but I, I think it's basically that you're just wiring the cables in parallel to the one input, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, right now, we've, we are working, we've been working on a two battery, a hot swap system. It's more advanced electronics. It's taken us a little bit longer. But that's something that we have in the works. Uh, until then, we have this. You don't get your data. You don't get the data feed into the distro. Uh, so they're sort of dumb batteries. But you are able to uh, see the voltage. And, uh, and so for right now, this really gets you the power you need. If you need a lot of power. And you can also, <coughs> excuse me. You can hot swap these because on the front of the uh, smart batteries, you have your display. So if you see your display going down, you can pop one of the batteries out and replace it. So in effect, it's kind of a manual hot swap system. So it, it does work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as so long as you're not so running down too low, you'll be fine with that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And one, let me go back to the uh, finish uh, out with the cables on these. So if we can go to the overhead view. Oh, yep. Sorry. I had somebody asking a question. I was just replying. Yep. Here's your overhead. Okay. So this, the, you can see the battery cables. One of the things that I love is to not have a uh, rat's nest. Like you say, I'm sort of a neat freak uh, also. And... Uh, so uh, we've designed cables that are 30, 40, and 50 centimeters long. And so they're probably the shortest cables you can find out there. And uh, uh, we're trying to make cables for every conceivable type of system. Uh, so right now we probably have about probably 30 different cables available. And... Uh, and we're trying, and you can see by using um, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing the name here of these, but uh, by using the, uh, sh the uh, what do we call these guys, remember? Uh, right angle connectors, is that um, cable techniques? Or is that, you uh, know what, I'm sorry, you're a little bit pixelated, so I can't tell. If anybody can see it at home, let me know. Um, I've got a lot of screens here, so they're a lot smaller. I can't zoom in. Well, anyway, um, 
we just have a lot of great ca cable management system. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that helps by bringing it up closer. It does. It's it's a very clean system. You know that that's the one thing that you guys are just going to love about it is like you said, it's you're not having all that gack in the bottom of your bag, that nest of cables. Everything is just per just precision where it needs to be. There's a lot more airflow through your bag. It's a lot easier to clean. It's a lot easier to find things. Um, you're going to drop your tweaker in and have to find it. But uh, other than that, you're good to go. You know? Well, yeah, I'd like to say that um, the idea of a bag is, um, is kind of, with this system, the idea of bag is going away um, because um, – you can actually wear you can actually wear these on your chest. So using your either your existing harness or the harnesses that we sell, uh, you can wear the thing, and no longer do you have to deal with the bag with the connections. Everything's uh, visible everywhere, so uh, you can get all connections. Uh, why don't you kick that photo up again of the harness? Of the harness? Yeah. Here's the uh, the little slideshow for the harness. Well, yeah. And then, sh yeah, show the one as it's connected to the unit. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's with the bag. And then show it without the bag. There. So uh, it's not the greatest shot, but it allows you to get to every connection uh, if you need to put a little bit of padding on it you can velcro a little bit of pad to the bottom of it if you're if you're if you don't have a big enough uh, bare belly or something like that uh, <laughs> to give you a little bit of cushioning um, but I find that um, I'm much happier without the bag altogether so sort of the bag is that was something that you used to have to have but now you don't have to have the bag anymore Mm -hmm. uh, someone is asking about Bangladesh price. Uh, if you don't mind repeating yourself, we are happy to get you any of those prices. Uh, but honestly, that's a lot easier for me to connect you with uh, a sales representative. So if we keep doing that in the chat, we will just put them in a timeout because that's not very nice. But other than that, guys, uh, we want to know if you guys have any more questions. I know that a lot of people are, are very interested. They're like, wow, this solves a lot of problems for people. So let us know if you have any more questions. Uh, Philippe is asking, can we go to True and see how everything fits? Well, you know, I actually just kind of thought of something, and I think what we're going to do, and Ken, I want to talk to you because I, I might need a little bit of logistics in order to make this work. But, you know, we've got five different locations at True Audio, and I think that we kind of need to do like a little world tour for this bag. So maybe what we do is we say for the next week it's available at True Audio, the one that's physically on my desk. Uh, we can put this out on the sales floor so anybody that wants to play with it, wants to see it, wants to ask questions about it, they can come to us at True Audio Los Angeles to check it out. And then maybe what we do is we send it to Nashville next week and let everyone in the Nashville area do it. And then we'll go to Georgia, then we'll go to Toronto, we'll go to Vancouver. And that way everyone, no matter where you are, can physically see this bag and, and hang out with it. What do you guys think? Does that sound like a kind of a cool idea, Ken? Can we do something like that? Uh, the bag is yours to do with what you want. Look at that. Guys, so that's what I'm going to do. You guys, this is my bag. I'm going to share this around the world to you guys, and we can play with it. You guys can come and see it at True Audios. All you got to do is ask me, and we'll let you know where it is at one of the different shops. Curtis Judd is asking, I assume one would not use a slot system like an SL2 with these units. Is that correct? Uh, that is incorrect. Mm. Uh the, uh, we can configure this with, uh, uh, as Ray's unit uses the, uh, he uses the A33 and the SL2 together. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we've been building these things for all sorts of uh, systems. It's, um, um, yeah, so you, you, if you use the large, you can use the SL6 on the large one. And so we can sandwich the whole thing together. The small one will take the A33 and the SL2, as as Ray's setup is. Yeah, that that's that's kind of what what we were showing earlier. That's my my setup is with the SL2. There's no uh, 
there's no layer in between. Oh, the, so. right. there. You know what? I'm going to see if I can zoom in for everybody. Stand by. We're going to go into this shot because, yeah, you know what? It, it's a beautiful shot, but it does not have that middle row. So you don't have to have rows. You can make them any any height that you want. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. What he does have, he does, uh, the handle's kind of concealing the, the uh, power the battery and the distro so we'll always have that tier there i i'll just call it the uh the power the uh, power tier okay i see so um gotcha yeah because so the power tier will be there originally I, I i almost even wanted to get rid of the top layer where the batteries it goes but that this actually gave me a space to put a a, a third receiver to fill up the eight channels um if you look at that picture again right next to the battery where the battery sled will go mm -hmm. there's a space right above that the the first transmitter on the left right there's a there and i have actually done it before i threw another dual channel receiver up there Boom. so i actually went, i i said you know what let's go ahead and keep that top layer there because it's good for the battery but it's also it, it gave me space to add another receiver up there you know, guys, I had just had a question come up. I, I, it's, it's probably come up in the comments, but I'm going to ask it myself, too. Uh, I guess the thing that makes me hesitant is being versatile, being modular. When somebody comes up and says, hey, can you do this? And you're like, oh, crap. Like, how hard is it for you to change things on the fly? Uh, as far as changing the mixer yeah well like maybe changing uh, the mixer or you know just sw like swapping out different things like if you're if you get a call let's say at 11 o'clock at night for a job at six o'clock in the morning is it going to take you three or four hours to build this bag that's what i want to know uh if you if you are a dual systems person like i sent one up to canada uh where the person had a um he had the A33 and he had the uh, Mix Pre 10. And so what I sent him was, uh, I sent him two sets of rods and then some shorter pieces of these. And so it takes about, I would say 15 minutes to change out the rods and the uh, spacers. So it took a little bit not much, about 15 minutes, and then you could completely change out the mixer. The other items, like the radios, uh, all that stuff, you don't have to bother with that. You just swap them out right on the spot. If you're using Velcro, if you're using Velcro, like these are, these radios are just Velcroed on, so you can just throw on a different one if you want. And over here, this is just clip on. So you can switch over whatever receivers or hops or whatever gear you have. You can quickly change that. The only thing that takes a little while to change is the mixer. And mm -hmm. then you can see on the bottom here, there are four bolts on each corner. So you can see that. Okay. So you have to do those four nuts, remove those four nuts, and then change the uh, length of the rod and the spacer. It goes pretty, like I say, about 15 minutes. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So it, it's very easy. And, you know, another thing to think about is like in reality, I, I would say maybe the majority of sound mixers out there, you got your main recorder and you're going to put your main recorder in there. And that's not really going to be the thing that changes. It's all the other stuff. It's the additional wires. It's the transmitter. It's the IFB system going out, wh whatever it is. So, you know, those are the more things that are variable when we're working on productions where you generally get the recorder that's going to be able to be able to handle everything and then you go from there yeah yeah exactly with with gear changing a lot john taper you know you need a system that's going to make it easy and clean um one thing that i really like about the system is personally those loops that go around things and other bags I'm kind of getting tired of that. Like, I like the fact of being able to just Velcro my piece of gear into an area just like that. Like, here's mine. That's my Velcroed. And, and I'm good to go. So 
It's it's a very easy thing to do. Uh, I'm gonna block you again, sir, just because you keep asking prices. Uh, I'm happy to get you those with any sales representative if you need it. So, oh, it is a troll. Thank you. Okay, copy. I didn't know that, guys. I'm still learning about these trolls, so we'll just get rid of them. Appreciate you. Uh, so, guys, anything else you want to talk about? I think that this is an incredible system. I think one of the things that I should do again is make sure that people know if you're overwhelmed at all, I don't want you to be. All you need to do is contact us at True Audio, and we're going to walk you through this. They've got their... Uh, their PDF that's available on their website that you can basically configure. You hand it over to us, and we'll get the bag built for you. Ray, what do you want to say before we uh, get close to ending? You too, Ken. What, what's going on? I wanted to uh, show our boom pole systems and our sleeves, and oh. that should be a ra- after that. Please, let's do it. I mean, that's one of the things about Ken is that he has a lot of stuff, as you've seen. He's not just building the bag. He's building all of the accessories. And you also have your own line of boom poles as well. Tell me about those. Uh, well, if you go to the overhead, I can show you that. Oh, go into it now. Uh, okay. So this is uh, – I'm just holding this on a stand right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use – um, we use a uh, Matthews uh, mini grip head, which is very light. We build our own uh, boom pole holder. And together, we have the boom poles available in carbon fiber and aluminum. And... Um, These are considered travel poles, too, I would assume, right? Because they fit in luggage, is that right? Well, this is why I designed it. I was doing a lot of traveling, and I just needed something very light to take with me. And if I put these together on the scale, which is right in front of us, it's one pound, six ounces. It's really small. It's the perfect size for doing a sit-down interview. It extends out to 67 inches, and it's um, 20 20 inches in length. Incredible. In fact, this is a setup of the boom pole holder if you guys want to see it. So I assume you just have a a simple lighting stand that you could get it anywhere, really. And then from there, uh, you know, put your boom pole holder and your extremely small, lightweight, but yet still strong boom poles that, you know, are great for traveling. Yeah. Ray, um, do you have any of these boom poles? Uh, I don't. I, I've seen them in person, uh, but I don't own them. Copy that. Copy that. All right. A lot of people are asking about Superzuka. Superzuka from Cannibal Industries. um, That is definitely an option for uh, for these rack and bag systems. So if you guys have a Superzuka and you want to, connecting this rack and bag system to the top of, you know, basically any of these carts you know there's there's a bunch of them but man super Zook is a great one uh they have the maverick cart that came out uh psc has a couple carts as well um but yeah yeah so a well, bunch of different i, I always have these carts too and i and i think like the docking brackets you can screw them into any flat surface there's a lot of carts out there that you can just put it on the top shelf on the very top of the cart it doesn't always have to just be like in the middle like you see my cart you can put it on top so if you're more run and gun, like I could have easily put the brackets on the on the top of this cart. Right. And any flat surface, so you can just run around and pop it back on and just screw it in. There's a lot of carts out there that have a flat top surface that you can easily put those brackets on. Very cool. Very cool. Ken, how are you feeling today? Oh, and then also, you know, just to protect all of, you know, your boom poles, you have your accessories, your your super sleeves, or simple sleeves, rather, that allow you to keep them safe during travel. I love that. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you go to the overhead, mm-hmm. so, so these are the actual uh, sleeves. They're made out of 1620 denier. Uh, ballistic nylon. This is the same stuff that you use on 
uh, military gear. It's just the toughest uh, nylon case uh, material you can get. And I designed four different sizes that fit most boom poles. And so you can see that what's nice about them is that you can get to the back of them. So they, so once you open it, it's uh, easy to get to it. And, um, uh, and they don't weigh much. And they're probably the uh, lowest cost sleeves, the lowest cost way to protect your pole on the market. They're, they're, I think some of them are like $30, not that much money. So um, yeah, and most boom poles, are, they're really sturdy. You don't need a big case. You don't need a lot of protection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so keeping it minimal, this is a, a good way to do it. Exactly. It's just a very clean way to put your tools away at the end of the day. And then if you're storing it inside of another case or your luggage, you're just making sure that it's not getting smacked or scratched around anything else. Simple sleeves. They've got four different sizes that you can check out. Very cool. Guys, we've gone over a lot of stuff. We've answered a lot of questions for people. How's everybody feeling today? I'm really appreciative of what we been allowed to present here anytime well you keep building stuff like this and and we'll keep bringing you on because uh from from what it sounds like in the chat you've got a lot of people that are interested in this this is a definite solution for anybody that you know well for one thing if you need a bag right now <laughs> this is one of the ones that i'm assuming these are available right now is that right ken I think we have about uh, 600 of them in stock. 600 in stock. So if you guys are interested, why don't you contact us at one of our True Audio locations? We can help you get started with their configuration PDFs that are available online. And in fact, if you're signed up for our mailing list, you should have gotten the email that has a link to the PDF so you can get started. But again, we're here for you if you need us. So... Guys, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. Incredible products, everyone. The rack and bag from Film Devices. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Ray Gona, Ken Martini from Film Devices. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is really a great opportunity to be here. Excellent. Well, guys, you know what to do. If you guys are interested in getting this, yes, there is a replay available. You can just click and watch this video whenever you want. That's why we make these huge over video, overview videos with all of the products that Ken makes because then you don't have to click around on eight or nine different videos. You watch one, you get to know all of the things. You can ask questions. I'd be happy to talk to Ken and get answers for you. Again, we have all of our sales representatives at all of our True Audio locations. We have five different locations, if you guys didn't know. Three in the U.S. as well as two up in Canada. And we love helping you. We love talking about this stuff. And so if you're interested in picking up this bag, please take a look. We also have a True Audio Synchrony credit card offer. So that means if you're interested in purchasing this bag and, you know, maybe you're a little nervous, maybe the work is a little bit slower... I truly believe that if you build it, they will come, just like they say in Field of Dreams. So check out the True Audio Synchrony credit card. And again, one last thing, congratulations to all of the Oscar nominees. If you guys haven't seen these movies, please go check them out. Support all of our brothers and sisters and all of the amazing work that they did last year. It was a hard year to do what we do, and they made it look good. So check these out. Let me know how you guys thought of those movies. What would you pick for the nominee for Oscars? Let me know, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Film Devices Rack and Bag System. We'll see you on another one. Take care.